One, two, three, four. Ah, guys, just a little help, please. A little help. Hmm, what do you think, nurse? I mean, look at the morphology of the P wave. Very interesting. Sometimes you can see an inversion. Sometimes it's upright. There's only one. Yes, doctor. Well, I think that it could potentially be a junctional rhythm. Or perhaps a wandering pacemaker. Oh, no. It doesn't really matter. I just need some help with the CPR. Wouldn't it be PEA anyway? Hey, that's enough out of you. Can't you see we're examining the morphology of the P wave? Yeah, you just wouldn't get it. Ah, if only I remembered what Mario talked about. For wandering pacemakers and junctional rhythms, I can't even tell if it's accelerated or not. Don't worry, everyone. I have his PowerPoint right here. Hello, everyone. My name is Mario Martinez, and this is Amateur EMS. So today we're going to be going over wandering pacemakers and junctional rhythms. So we're going to go over the three different variations of junctional rhythms. We're going to be trying to understand their characteristics, the causes, and the implications of them, as well as going over some treatment plans. So, if you did like this video, I highly recommend going back and checking out the EKG playlist. We go over different types of EKGs. We're building up the basics right now, and it's essential building blocks that you may need to know. So again, we want to identify the characteristics of a wandering pacemaker, differentiate between the different types of junctional rhythms, and understand the clinical implications and treatment options. Here's a quick look at our EKG rules of interpretation. So some things that we want to look out for, look at the P waves. We want to make sure that they're upright. We want to check the PR interval. Is it less than 0.2 seconds from the QRS complex? For some of these junctional rhythms, you may not even identify a P wave. And so in that case, you can't even measure the PR interval. How many P waves are there? Are there more than one? Are there any at all? For the QRS complex, is it less than 0.12 seconds? And do the P waves and the QRS complexes match up? Do the P waves match with the P waves? Do the QRS complexes match with the QRS complexes? We may not see some of our P waves, but we can still at least measure our QRS complexes to each other off the R wave compared to the other R wave. You should see that that should match up. However, there's gonna be some severe irregularity whenever it comes to the P waves. So for a wandering pacemaker, to define it, it's a rhythm where the pacemaker site shifts between the SA node, the atrial tissue, and the AV node. The P waves are going to vary in shape and size, so we really want to pay attention to P wave morphology. Remember our rules of interpretation. We want to look at the heart rate. Is it 60 to 100 beats per minute? You're going to look at the causes. That's going to be an increased vagal tone. Certain medications can cause this, and it's usually a benign symptom. So let's take a look at our first wandering pacemaker. We can see here we have some abnormalities with the P wave. So some are upright, which is great. But then sometimes we have this inverted P wave or this abnormal morphology in our P wave. So right here we can consider this being a wandering pacemaker where sometimes the P waves again is upright. Sometimes it's upside down. And remember we talked about the AV node firing off. It traveling back over to the SA node and giving us this very abnormal rhythm right here. And you can see here, we also have this weird morphology. Again, we have another image of a wandering pacemaker. So we can see here, we have the upright P waves. That's really what we want to pay attention to whenever we're looking at these type of rhythms. We have a flat P wave here, and then an inverted P wave right here. You can see there's a couple different episodes of this. However, the QRS complexes are matching up, right? Sometimes we're missing a P wave, but it's in the general same spot every time. Also, the QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. The PR interval, whenever we are able to read it, is less than 0.2 seconds, or one big red box. Now to look at junctional rhythms. Junctional rhythms originate near the AV node, and they take over where the sinus node fails. There are three different types of junctional rhythms. There's a junctional, also known as an escape rhythm, an accelerated junctional rhythm, and junctional tachycardia. So for a junctional escape rhythm, the characteristics are the heart rate's going to be fairly slow. It's going to be between 40 to 60 beats per minute. And this is one of the defining characteristics of it. Also, the P waves are absent. They can be inverted or retrograde. They can have a narrow QRS complex, and the causes is usually SA node failure, hypoxia, or certain drug use. So we can see here we have a flattened P wave in all of these. It's a slow heart rate. You can see by all the extra boxes if we remember the box method. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. We can't tell the PR interval, but the QRSs all match up with each other. Here's another image of a junctional rhythm. Again, it's a very wide QRS complex separation where we can look at the R wave versus the R wave. You can see there's multiple boxes in here. We don't have a P wave. It's flattened at this point. 
And the QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. We can't measure the PR interval, but the QRSs match up with each other, which is good. Now, for an accelerated junctional rhythm, the characteristics are the heart rate's at 60 to 100 beats per minute, the P waves are absent, inverted or retrograde again, they have a narrow QRS complex, that can be caused by medications like digitalis toxicity, which you should know in paramedic school that this is a very dangerous blood pressure medication. You have to be really careful with titrating it. You can also see things like maybe they have blue-green vision is a really big hallmark for this. Ischemia or lack of oxygen, or it can be caused from post-surgery. For an image of an accelerated junctional rhythm, you can see that the R to R intervals or the QRS complex to the QRS complex is getting a lot tighter now, right? We can see that we have a P wave, it's inverted here, it's flattened, inverted. So we have some abnormal P waves. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. The PR interval is still less than 0.2 seconds, which is again, one big red box. For the QRS complex, you're looking at the little white boxes, you don't want more than three. And the QRS or the R wave matches with the R wave. The P waves do match with the P waves whenever they are present. So right here, right here, right here. But the differentiation between the junctional rhythm and the accelerated junctional rhythm is simply the heart rate. Here's another image of an accelerated junctional rhythm. Here we can see an inversion of the P wave on every beat. So you can see right here. And again, the QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. The PR interval is less than 0.2 seconds. So again, it'd be one of these big boxes here. And the QRSs matches with the QRSs. The P waves match with the P waves and they are falling in line with each other. Now for junctional tachycardia, the heart rate's gonna be greater than 100 beats per minute. P waves, again, are gonna be absent, inverted, or retrograde. They are gonna have a narrow QRS complex. They're gonna have dizziness or palpitations at times, not always. And it can be caused by a re-entry mechanism or increased irritability in the AV junction. And again, the biggest characteristic here is we're gonna see these abnormal P waves. Everything else is gonna look fine. And we're gonna see an increased heart rate. So greater than 100 beats per minute. We may start to see this affect the patient with some dizziness, palpitations, or other issues. You may also notice an altered mental status. So here we can see there's a very abnormal P wave. Here we can see we have a very abnormal P wave. It's flattened in every single beat. The boxes is about, I would say around two boxes, a little bit more. So if we go from this line right here, you can look, one red box, two red box, two and a half red boxes. These aren't the best images. I'm sorry about that, guys. But the P waves are absent here. They're flattened. The QRS complex is less than 0.12 seconds. We can't measure the PR interval because it's absent. And the QRS complexes match up with each other. You can also see some ischemia. Here's another image of a junctional tachycardic rhythm. Again, this is not the best image and I apologize for that. But we can look, we have our QRS complexes. They're less than 0.12 seconds. Our P waves, we're assuming that they're flattened. And we wanna make sure that they're matching up with each other. They are, that looks good. Another thing, you can see that it's a very fast heart rate. If we use the box method, we can see it's just a little bit over 2.2 boxes or 2.3 boxes. So we would take 300 divided by 2.2. This is going to be an extremely high heart rate or probably around 130 beats per minute, 140 or so. So what does this mean for EMS? Well, for a wandering pacemaker, it's typically benign and it doesn't really require any interventions. For a junctional rhythm, we want to treat the patient, right? Not so much the monitor. So we want to consider what's going on with our patient. Are they symptomatic? Are they experiencing an altered mental status? Depending on your local protocols, you may want to consider atropine or pacing depending on the patient. Although if you are considering pacing, I would highly recommend contacting medical control. It's all going to depend on your patient if they're symptomatic or not. So thank you guys for watching. Understanding wandering pacemakers and junctional rhythms are crucial in EMS and ALS. Each type has unique ECG or EKG features and treatment needed. Be sure to review the playlist for more on EKG interpretation. If you did like this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate all your support and I will see you on the next one.